Hello, my name is Diane, and today I want to talk about all of the series I read from in 2023 that I would like to finish. Only one of these is a series that is currently fully published that I just haven't gotten through all of the books that are out yet, and the rest of these I'm awaiting the next installment to come out. Some of them just started publishing this year, so there's only one book out, but I do want to read the sequels when they're released. So getting right into it, I have Ender's Saga by Orson Scott Card. This is the series that is fully published. It includes Ender's Game, Speaker for the Dead, Xenocide, Children of the Mind, and Ender in Exile. There is a, I think it's considered a companion series, Ender's Shadow, and that series happens alongside this one, and then they come together for The Last Shadow. I am planning on reading all of those at some point, unless I lose interest down the line with this series. But I have read the first three, so I still have two more in Ender Saga, and then I'll also be reading Ender Shadow before I read that final book. I am really enjoying the series. I think it's a really interesting idea, and the conversations that are being had are really interesting. In the way that they're written, I just really like Orson Scott Card's writing. While there isn't always anything too exciting going on, I like the characters that he's created and seeing them interact and figure out how to solve whatever problem they're currently dealing with within this world. So that's the only one of these that's fully published that I'm just behind on. The next one is A Song of Ice and Fire, which includes A Game of Thrones, A Clash of Kings, A Storm of Swords, A Feast for Crows, and A Dance with Dragons. I somehow had avoided many spoilers from the series before I finally got to it. I know I'm very late to the party here, but I loved the series. I especially loved the first book. I think that for me is my favorite. It's just such an expansive world with so many characters and they're all very interesting and fleshed out. They're very different from one another. And while that certainly makes the story much more interesting to bounce between each of them and see where they all are within the world, within their personal journeys, and how their relationships develop as we go along. I think that's also why some books people like more than others because there are so many characters and so many things going on. You don't always get to see all of them from one book to the next. You might get a little glimpse into their life and then you have to wait till the next book to really see what's going on with them and figure that out where specifically they are within their personal story and how they fit into the bigger picture. But I tend to really like stories like that that have a large cast of interesting characters in a very large world with lots of things going on that all make sense in relation to one another. So I'm happy to wait for the sixth book until whenever. I'm happy that I read these first five books because I had a lot of fun with them. I think it's a really cool world, a very interesting story. I also read Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This includes Before the Coffee Gets Cold, Tales from the Cafe, Before Your Memory Fades, and Before We Say Goodbye. This is a pretty different series from a lot of things that I normally read. It takes place in a cafe where customers can come in and travel through time, but there are rules they have to follow. They have to sit in a specific seat. They can only visit someone who has been to the cafe at some point in time and they only have until a cup of coffee gets cold to come back. And each book follows four different customers that come in and they all have very different situations where the person that they're trying to visit, whatever their relationship with them is, what the conditions of them not having that person in their life anymore. It's either someone who's passed away or moved far away. And I think it's a very interesting idea to explore and I like that each situation is very different because they're all going to appeal to different people. Some of these stories I related to very strongly and some of them I didn't really connect with just because I've never been in that type of situation, but some of them are similar to situations I have been in, relationships I've been in that have ended for whatever reason. And I think it's just an interesting question to explore if you only had one chance because you can only ever do this once to see someone for only a few minutes one last time what would you want to do with that? What would you want to ask them or say to them or get out of that experience? Or would it just make it more difficult to see them again? And I think it's really interesting the way that it's explored through this particular setup. Finley Donovan by El Casamano. We have Finley Donovan is killing it, Finley Donovan knocks him dead, and Finley Donovan jumps the gun. 
I really loved the first book in this series. I think it's a very funny situation. I like this trope of an ordinary person accidentally getting into a life of crime. Finley Donovan is discussing her current book idea. She's an author who's struggling to finish up her latest story, and a woman overhears her and mistakes her as a contract killer, an assassin, and hires her to kill someone for her. And Finley Donovan is currently a single mother who is very strapped for cash, so she's kind of interested in this idea, even though she's definitely not a criminal and she unintentionally gets wrapped up into this life of crime where people think that she is an assassin and she very much is not. It's a very silly situation but it's one that I think is very fun to see in media. I didn't love the latest installment that came out this year, Finley Donovan Jumps the Gun, but I am interested to see what the fourth book will do where Finley Donovan's journey through crime is going to take her. I think there are a few books planned to come out in this series still, so I think for me the fourth book is going to decide if I really want to continue. Right now I'm still interested to see what El Casamano has in store for this character and where this story is headed, but after book four that may make or break it for me. And I have Edinburgh Nights by T.L. Huchu. This includes The Library of the Dead, Our Lady of Mysterious Ailments, and The Mystery at Dunvegan Castle. This follows a main character who is a teenager living in Edinburgh who... I think this world is sort of post-apocalyptic feeling. It's very darker atmosphere. Our main character, anyway, can talk to ghosts, she can communicate with them, and she works delivering messages from the dead to their living relatives. She's very sassy, she's very snarky, she's definitely got an attitude, she's taking care of her younger sister and her grandmother, so she's got a lot on her shoulders for a teenage girl. I really like the series, I really love the main character, I love seeing her get into some sort of dangerous situation and then try and figure out how to resolve it using her abilities, using the people around her as resources as well. I don't think this is a super standout series for me, but I always have fun while I'm reading it. I think it's a very well-written, interesting story, and I love seeing what kind of situation we have from one installment to the next. Vagrant Gods by David Dalglish. This one, I guess I haven't technically caught up on it. The first book is The Bladed Faith, which I have not read, but the second book came out this year, The Sapphire Altar, and I did read that one. I know that's kind of a weird thing to do, to read a sequel without ever having read the first book. The third and final book in this trilogy comes out next month, and I am going to read that, even still without having read the first book. That was mostly just a mistake on my part. I got the second book without having read the first book, without realizing it was a sequel. And I just read it anyway, and I still really enjoyed it. I had no problem getting into the story. But I really like the story. I think it's a really interesting world. There's a bunch of characters that all feel very unique, and we bounce between them as they're dealing with the things going on in the world. I just think the plot's very interesting. I think it's well written. I had a lot of fun with it. I'm looking forward to the final book. Maybe one day I'll read the first book, but at this point I'm not sure if I ever will. But either way, it didn't stop me from enjoying the sequels. The Band by Nicholas Eames. This includes Kings of the Wild and Bloody Rose. I loved Kings of the Wild. I thought it was such a fun story. It's a group of older adventurers and they get back together because one of their daughters is in danger and he goes and seeks the help of Clay, who is our main character in this. And together they go and get the other guys get their band back together and go to hopefully save this guy's daughter. It feels like it's gonna be a suicide mission because of where they're going is extremely dangerous even for these very seasoned veterans of adventuring. There's a lot of musical references in it, classic rock references. I loved the dynamic between these characters. Bloody Rose I didn't like as much. I didn't connect with the character as much. This follows the daughter and goes through her story and I liked it. I liked being back in this world but I just didn't click with it quite as much as the first book. There is a third book planned. I'm not sure when it's supposed to come out. There's been a bit of time between the second book and now so I don't know how much longer we'll have to wait for that final book but I am interested to see 
how everything comes together, who the next book is going to follow, because I would assume it's going to follow a different main character. Even though I loved the first book, I liked the second book, I'm interested to see what the third book has in store. And the rest of these are series that started this year. The first book came out in 2023, and I've read all of these first books, obviously, and really enjoyed them. I'm looking forward to the sequels. For the most part, I think all of them have sequels planned for next year. At least I know most of them do. So first off, book one in the Forever Desert by Moses Osiotumi is The Lies of the Ajungo. This is a novella. The second book is called The Truth of the Aleki, and it is coming out early next year. And I'm very excited about that. I really loved the story. I'm interested to see what happens next because the sequel takes place in the same world, but I think 500 years after the events of the, what happened in this book. So I'm curious to see how closely the two are related or if it's just going to be stories set in the same world. I also read the first book in the Pandominium series by M.R. Carey called Infinity Gate. The sequel, Echo of Worlds, is supposed to come out next year. I really liked the story. It's definitely a setup story. I believe it's just going to be a duology. So this is the first half of how the three main characters get together and kind of set up what's going on in this world in the main plot. It follows three characters who live on different Earths, different versions of Earth. I'm not really sure where this story is going, but I'm very excited to see it in the next book. Emily Wilde by Heather Fawcett, the first book being Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. The second book comes out in January, Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands. I'm not very into fae stories, fairies, and things like that, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very charming. I love the character of Emily Wilde, and she's writing the first Encyclopedia of Fairies and trying to track down this elusive type of fairy so that she can finish her encyclopedia. Her friend and academic rival comes to help her. And he's very charming, very sociable, very unlike Emily herself. Who, And I think in the next book, we're gonna get to spend a lot more time in that fairy world as she's presumably making a map of that world based on the title. Then Lands of the Firstborn by Gareth Hanrahan, the first book being The Sword Defiant. The second book is titled The Sword Unbound. I love this book. I think this was easily one of my favorite books of the year. It's a very rich feeling world. There's a lot of history to it. There's a lot of relationships between the people we come across. And our main character is a former hero. He's one of nine heroes that saved this land from this evil lord and then took over his city. And now they're all kind of doing their own things. They're in more overseeing roles rather than saving and fighting anybody but he knows that there's something coming and he has to go and try and get the group back together so that they can prepare to face whatever it is because he's really not sure the overall story isn't point a to point b he's kind of going from one point to the next doing whatever he needs to do there and then figuring out where he needs to go next it feels very much like a tabletop RPG campaign. And I just think the world is very interesting. The characters are very morally gray. And he also has a sword which used to belong to that Dark Lord and it talks to him. It has a personality all of its own. It's definitely its own character, even though it normally would just be an inanimate object. The sword definitely has its own agenda and its own opinions on things and it can either help or hinder our main character L, depending how it's feeling that day. The Library by Mark Lawrence, the first book being The Book That Wouldn't Burn. The second book is supposed to come out next year called The Book That Broke the World. And this follows two main characters. One of them has only ever lived in this expansive library and the other one lived in the outside world and then comes to the library and they eventually meet and learn things about the library through one another. This is a very interesting world to have such a large library that no one seems to have really seen all of it or even knows everything that's contained within it. And finally, another book that I very much enjoyed this year, the first book in the Forsaken series by R.J. Barker, Gods of the Weirdwood. The second book is set to come out next year called Warlords of the Weirdwood. I just really liked the atmosphere of the story. I loved the writing of it. We have our main character who lives basically as a hermit. He just wants to keep to himself. He just wants to be left alone. 
but he is the only person who can safely navigate these magical woods that he lives outside of, and he gets asked for help to search for someone who has been lost within the woods. I particularly just loved the description of the forest and his relationship to it. He definitely has some sort of connection, some sort of bond to it beyond just knowing the land. And it wasn't quite the story I was expecting, but I really loved what I ended up getting. I loved the atmosphere, I loved the setting especially, but I also loved the character. He picks up a few companions along the way, and I loved their relationships with one another. So I very much enjoyed the story. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing where his journey takes him next. Let me know if you've read any of these, if you started any series this year that you're really excited to continue with. That's all for me today. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you next time. Bye.